Okay, so what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you how I do my trap setup. And I really like this setup for my style of trapping. Now, whatever style of trapping you like, or you prefer, or whatever, you know, whatever outcome you're trying to obtain, go for it. This is my style. So what I'm gonna do is, I just use these side cuts, and I get underneath that J-hook, and I just pinch right there. I go up as high as I can, I pinch. So now you got, I mean, you're right underneath of it. I just grab right here, crank up a little bit. It gives you a good, nice, steady, even open. Uh, my mentor, Dave, showed me this. <clears throat> I can't take credit. Uh, and then what's nice is, so we'll just be able to put, we'll be able to put our number three chain. So what we did is we took the number three chain off of this to kind of lighten the load, just of the overall trap. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple links of this number three chain. So this is number two twist link kinkless. And then this is just your straight link chain. And I'm just gonna take a couple links of this. So four links, go up and cut the fifth link. So like I said, one, two, three, four, cut the five. I like putting this in a vice grip. It does really well with like the stability of it. I mean, this is a actually a small vice grip really, and it does a really good job. So now I've got my four links, and then what we'll do is really just pop it right on there. So you got four links. I love this base because I can I can sit my pliers back because it's inset, and then I can just I don't have to use a lot of torque or anything. So then we've got a nice free. Nice close. I like metal on metal always whenever you're closing J hooks now. So one thing to remember now, if you're going to weld those, just be mindful that if you're presetting these and, and you have your J hooks and everything welded and someone comes through with a, uh, a bush hog or something and catches up on one of your traps, you could really fuck the shit up. Um, so just be mindful of the, of the tack weld and the J hook. It, hey, it, 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 I mean, it's a permanent, you're not popping these things open. I mean, yeah, you can, but you, you know what I'm saying from a fur bearer standpoint, but just be mindful that you don't mess up someone's farm equipment, because uh, that's one way to get your ass off the property. This is gonna be the beginning of my anchor, or my anchoring system. Okay, so I want to go from this line to this line. And I know you might think that's a little short, but you're gonna have a, and everything. We'll just throw it right here and snap it off. So now we've got our 1 8 inch cable and we're ready to rock and roll. Take that. Now we don't have to worry too much because we're gonna put our D-ring through here. So we'll just put a standard loop on. This stuff's pretty stiff. I like to leave a little bit hanging out, okay? Now if you have any excess or you think that's too big and you don't got enough length, push it back through the other side, but make sure you keep a little bit for that crimp. And that's just the way I like to do it. You can, I mean, you can do it however you want, but I just always like to have a little bit of length hanging out. And then with these big, or I should say bigger ferrules, you can get a good four crimps in them. So I feel like that's, that's going to hold pretty, pretty well, honestly. The next thing is putting the anchor on. So I'm going away from, I'm going away from these welds. I've had so many of these welds pop open. The thing is, is I can always replace these and I, and I probably gonna have a better um, understanding or a better, better realization of when these are damaged or when these need replaced as opposed to these because I've ran these for years uh, and then all of a sudden they start busting open on me. And I don't know if it's the welds are bad or just, you know, hard ground and, you know, shit just starts to malfunction. But we'll get her taken care of and get her out of here. And then I'll... I'll save this chain and I'll recycle this chain for something else. Now I know it might seem a little bit too too much production here going on uh, for your liking. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So I'll save this and I'll use this for my um, mix bag line for my creek traps. So now I've got this. I'm gonna have a quick connect go to it. Beautiful. Now with this end, I already got one out. I'm gonna Pop that in, pop that through. Okay, and like I said, I like to leave a little bit of slack out or excess on that crimp side. And like I said, you can get typically get about four crimps out of this. 
if you're a little meticulous. If you're not, don't worry about it. So that's just, that's super small. We just snap that on right there. And that right there is my trapping setup. So we're coming down from a number two twist link, going to a swivel box with two swivels. Then you're gonna to go to number four, number three links. And then th I believe this is a 3 16th quick connect. And then I'm going to one eighth inch cable. And I will um, give you a quick measurement on that. So all in all with, from the loop, it's about eight inches. So everything that I can put underground from the terminal end up is 15 inches. So right, right here, right at the tip of this. So I'm gonna bury everything down to that point. I don't set my stakes. So it'll go down to, to like that. And then whenever you pull to set, you're gonna get a lift up and that way you can get a hold of these, this chain right here to pull up and pry out. And if you have any issues, instead of losing a bunch of chain, you can just take this off. You can mark this on your GPS, come back to it at a later date, dig it up, come back to it and reconnect to it or leave it. It's up to you, man. It's your, it's your line. So what's the reason I do that? What's the purpose I do that? Why, uh, why am I, um, you know, wasting my time with putting that putting that um, quick connect on there with that eight, eight, eight inches of one eighth cable. The reason I'm doing that is because I trap here in Ohio and then I trap out of state. When I trap out of state, um, I don't really wanna be running a big heavy duty super stake. So I run Berkshires, I run the cheap disposables out there, the ones that I can cut and leave. When I'm here at home, I had already bought a stockpile of the bullet stakes. So I want to keep them. Well, the you know the the S hooks kept breaking, the welds kept popping. I would have chains bust. I'd have welds break on chains. So I thought, how could I combat that? And this is the this is the actual example I came up with. So hopefully, it, it, you know that sheds a little light on on why I'm doing it, and not just like oh I'm doing this just because uh, I want to. So I'll keep running the the super stakes here at home, and then when I go out of state, I'll be able to run them on. Um, Berkshires.